protein called mTOR that's evolutionarily conserved. And if you inhibit this one single protein and every species studied to date, yeast, worms, flies, and mice, lifespan is extended. And not only do these animals live longer, but they stay healthier longer. And because these species span a billion years of evolution and this mechanism has been conserved, it's very likely that mTOR inhibition will also have benefits for human aging. So why does inhibiting one single protein have such dramatic effects on every species? Well, it may be because mTOR becomes hyperactive as we age. So mTOR is a protein that is activated, the main protein that's activated when we eat. And when mTOR is activated, just like with growth hormone, you make new proteins, you make new lipids, and cells are able to grow. And then during periods of the day when we're fasting, mTOR is inhibited. And when mTOR is inhibited, that upregulates stress resistance and repair pathways, which are important for maintaining health. And one of the reasons that fasting has benefits is because it inhibits mTOR. So mTOR should have this circadian rhythm on during the day when we eat, off during the day when we fast. But what happens as we get older, and this is seen in human tissues as well in, as in some mouse tissues, is that mTOR just stays on all the time. It stops responding to fasting. So there's no time during the day when we have these protective pathways upregulated. And this suggests that just turning down mTOR to young levels rather than turning it off may be what we need for targeting aging in humans. So one of the ways we can turn mTOR down in humans is with a drug called rapamycin that has a very interesting backstory. There's a volcanic crater and a remote Pacific island called Easter Island or Rapa Nui. And in this volcanic crater, there was a lake and the local residents said that water in this volcanic crater had health benefits. And so scientists subsequently went and investigated the soil in this volcanic crater, and they found it contained a bacteria that made this compound rapamycin. And rapamycin turned out to be a really potent and specific inhibitor of mTOR. And now rapamycin is the best validated therapeutic to extend lifespan and health span. One drug has in labs repeated over and over around the world has extended lifespan, yeast, worms, flies, and mice. And then in the mice, similar to the data that Sophia just show, showed, even if you start rapamycin late in life, the equivalent of about a 60-year-old human, that was shown in the study, this was a huge study by the National Institutes of Aging, showing in red that the animals who started taking rapamycin at a 60-year-old equivalent, had extended lifespan compared to animals who took placebo. And then in the study on the right, when rapamycin was started at the equivalent of a 60-year-old mouse and was just given once every five days, that extended lifespan. So given all of this validation of rapamycin across species, why haven't we done more to see if rapamycin extends human lifespan? And there's two problems. One is that rapamycin and all its derivatives, which are called rapalogs, they're approved for use, but they're all off patent. So it's have been tough to get investors interested in funding the millions of dollars of trials that are needed to test this for aging-related conditions. The other problem is safety. So rapamycin, again, is approved for use in transplant patients, but it's at relatively high doses that have considerable side effects. So people have been worried about moving this drug into potentially relatively healthy older adults because they may have some side effects that will outweigh benefits. So the question is, can we develop a next generation of rapalogs that are very similar to rapamycin but safer? 
So to understand how to make a safer rapalog, it's important to know that mTOR functions in two multi-protein complexes. One is called TORC1 and the other is called TORC2. And it's inhibition of mTOR in that TORC1 complex that's associated with extension of lifespan. And instead, when you inhibit mTOR in the TORC2 complex, that's associated with decreased lifespan in mice and hyperlipidemia and hyperglycemia. So ideally, the theory would be, if you made a TORC1 specific rapalog, that would be safe, or safer potentially than the first generation rapalogs. So rapamycin, verilimus, all of the currently approved rapalogs potently inhibit mTOR in that TORC1 complex, but they also partially inhibit mTOR in the TORC2 complexes. So at Tornado, we were lucky enough to get a whole portfolio of next-generation rapalogs made by expert chemists at Novartis, and these compounds are TORC1 selective. So unlike the first-generation rapalogs, they do not inhibit TORC2. And just for the scientists in the room, I'm trying not to show too much scientific data, but Averolimus, an approved drug very similar to rapamycin, when you look at inhibition of TORC1 activity, it's a very potent inhibitor of TORC1, but it also partially inhibits TORC2. TOR101 is the lead rapalog of Tornado, potently inhibits TORC1, but it actually increases TORC2 activity, but basically doesn't have any TORC2 inhibitory activity, even at a thousand-fold higher concentrations than the IC50 for TORC1. So I'm going to spend the rest of the talk talking about TOR 101. Before you move drugs into humans, you want to make sure in an animal species they do what they're supposed to do. So we wanted to make sure if you give a rat, TOR 101 is TORC 1 inhibited. And you can measure TORC 1 activity by measuring the level of this protein called phospho S6. So you can see in rats given a 3, 10, or 30 mg per kg dose of this drug, in placebo-treated liver, kidney, and muscle, you see nice TORC1 activity, and it's almost completely inhibited at all of these doses. So it, it's a TORC1 inhibitor, that's what we would expect, but what about the safety? Is it really safer to have a rapalog that only inhibits TORC1 versus TORC1 and 2? So again, before moving into humans, you test the safety of drugs in two different species. This is required by health authorities. So I'm going to show you the data that we've generated in rats, and we'll, we have the same data in monkeys. So when you test the toxicity, you look in these animals and you say, Where, what organ systems am I seeing toxicity? And what's the lowest level of drug dose where I start seeing that toxicity? So you can see here a verilimus, the approved rapalog, and you, the same data you'll see with rapamycin. At very low doses, these are these little blue bars, you see lymphoid toxicity, heart, lung, testes, uterus, eye, and bone toxicity. When we repeat these same experiments with TOR 101, we've basically dialed out all the toxicity seen with a verilimus. There's no lymphoid, heart, lung, uterus, eye, or bone. The only toxicity we've seen is testicular toxicity because you need TORC1 to make sperm. So this so far looks like these TORC1 specific rapalogs may be much safer than the first generation rapalogs, but we're gonna have to move them into the clinic and prove this is true in humans. So that gets to how are we going to test whether these rapalogs actually slow aging in humans like they do in preclinical species? And we can't, of course, look at lifespan in a clinical trial because it's too long an endpoint. So we thought about what are the organ systems whose function improves in older mice who are given rapamycin? And the function of some but not all aging organ systems improve. So multiple groups have shown brain function improves, heart function improves, immune function improves, and muscle function improves. And I've spent a lot of talks during previous years 
discussing work we've done on improving immune function. So today, I'm going to talk more about how we might be able to use Rapalogs to improve muscle function in older adults. So we heard about you know, the importance of exercise and maintaining muscle function in older adults today. But it turns out about 10 to 27 percent of people over the age of 60 have loss of muscle strength and function, and this is called sarcopenia. And this is you know, something we have no drugs. We have exercise, but no drugs to help people with this loss of muscle strength. And it has a huge impact on quality of life because addition to increasing risk of falls, it, it is like a major factor why we stop being able to live independently. And it's also associated with increased risk of longer hospital stays and mortality. So the other interesting thing about sarcopenia is you can see in white that as we get older, our muscle mass decreases, but even more in blue, our muscle strength decreases. And the mus loss of muscle strength is out of proportion to the loss of muscle mass. And Novartis and other groups have actually developed drugs that successfully build muscle in older adults, but it turns out the older adults aren't any stronger and don't function better. So it's really key that we figure out how to improve strength and not just muscle mass. One of the reasons muscle strength may decline as we get older is because there's a degeneration of something called the neuromuscular junction. And so muscles move because there's a signal from the brain that gets transmitted by motor neurons to the muscle. And where the neurons contact the muscle is called the neuromuscular junction. And in young animals, this neuromuscular junction has this nice sort of continuous pretzel shape. But when you look in older animals, the neuromuscular junction gets fragmented. And this fragmentation of the neuromuscular junction results in this signal from the brain not being transmitted effectively to the muscle, and this may contribute to muscle weakness. So what's the evidence that mTOR inhibition might have any impact on this? Well, first, I talked about the fact that in certain muscles or in certain organ systems, as we get older, mTOR just stays active all the time, even when we fast. And this is true of muscle. So it's in both rats and in mice, as they get older and they're fasted, more and more torque one activity stays on in the muscle. So you're not getting that period of the day where torque one is inhibited and protective pathways are upregulated. And the same thing is seen in human muscle. So this is a muscle biopsy from a young adult or an old adult. And the red staining is, again, this marker of torque one activity, phosphoase six. You see no torque one activity in the muscle of a fasted younger person. And this is hard to see in the light, but all of those stars indicate muscle fibers in an older muscle that's staying on even though these older individuals are fasted. So what's the evidence that having too much of this mTOR activity is actually bad for muscle? Well, you can look at this by genetically turning mTOR on all the time by removing a protein in muscle called TSC. And when TSC is removed, torque one activity goes up. So you can see that here, here's muscle from a control mouse. There's no torque one activity. If you remove this protein in muscle called TSC, all the muscles start overexpressing torque one. Now, this hyperactive M torque one activity has no issues when muscle are, well, I mean, when mice are young, but as they get older, they start losing more and more muscle and getting the hunchback or kyphosis that we see in older adults. And they really lose their physical capacity. So this is just how long they can run on a treadmill. And you can see the mice with hyperactive torque one can't run as long. They lose their endurance. And this raises the question, well, if too much torque one is in old muscle, 
it, can we use rapamycin to just turn it down and will that have any impact on physical function in mice? So this is a study where the investi and none of this data is from me, by the way. These are all other investigators in the field, and I owe them all thanks for this research. So this is a study in which investigators took mice and started them on rapamycin either in middle age or late in life and looked over time at their strength. And you can see the control mice have a progressive decrease in strength as they get older, whereas the mice treated with rapamycin were able to maintain their strength as they aged. And then the question is, why are they stronger? So the investigators looked at muscle mass, and some muscles got bigger, but really there wasn't a great effect on muscle mass. Where they saw an effect was that neuromuscular junction. And you can see in, when the mice were young, they had that nice pretzel-shaped neuromuscular junction, it fragmented when they got old, but in the old mice that had been treated with rapamycin, they maintained that nice pretzel-shaped morphology of the neuromuscular junction. So this may be one of the reasons why rapamycin helps maintain strength. But in the end, we don't care just about can we you know, lift a barbell better. We really want to maintain mobility and physical function so that we can enjoy life and not be sort of really limited in what we can do. So again, this is not going to be data from me. This was data from that National Institutes of Aging study following the mice where they started rapamycin in middle age and looking at the physical function of the mice by the time they were the human equivalent of a 90-year-old. And this is movies I got from Randy Strong. So you see in the top, this is a 90-year-old mouse equivalent who was treated with placebo, and it really has trouble moving, like many 90-year-old humans. And the mouse on the bottom is the one that's been getting rapamycin since middle age, and it's, it maintains a very youthful uh, mobility. And we have to prove this will happen in a human, but of course, this is, you know, we don't want to end up immobile in a wheelchair. We're hoping all of this research will lead to our coming up with interventions that will keep people mobile and enjoying life longer. So just in summary, rapamycin is the best validated therapeutic to extend lifespan and health span in preclinical species. And Tornado has these torque one specific rapalogs that may have improved efficacy for aging-related conditions and improved safety, but we have to prove that. We have to go into humans to show it. And data from preclinical models suggests that rapalogs may be effective at improving sarcopenia and muscle function. So stop there.